Kona, one of the most pitiless landscapes in the world, the arid Australian outback. In this corner, one of the most resilient survivors in the world, the red kangaroo. With skills shaped by millions of years of evolution, this time it's brought a knockout punch, a devastating drought. As thousands succumb to dehydration and starvation, one remarkable kangaroo may be on the ropes. Can he make it through hell on earth? Or is this one fight even the red kangaroo can't win? Australia, the oldest continent on the planet. Almost three quarters of it looks like this. At its centre, it gets five inches of rain a year. The mercury can hit 110 degrees Fahrenheit. But the hardest part for those who live here is the climate's unpredictable personality. This is a place where there are no true seasons. Only moods. To make it here, you need to be able to roll with the punches and shift gears in a hurry. The acknowledged master of that art in the Australian outback is the red kangaroo. The largest marsupial in the world. This female is pregnant. Red kangaroo females are almost always pregnant. They've evolved to adapt their reproductive systems to the unpredictable whims of the environment. At any given moment, a female can have three offspring to care for, each at a different stage of development. This is number one, the peanut. After 33 days developing in the womb, the newborn emerges as a blind, hairless, pink creature, roughly the size of a peanut. We call him Rusty. There's virtually no sign of the powerful hind legs we all associate with the kangaroo. He uses his arms to make the gruelling trek up the belly to his mother's nipple, guided solely by instinct and smell. the female goes into heat again, releasing hormones that stimulate ovulation. Once fertilized, the mother's endocrine system puts the development of this new embryo on hold. That's number two. Its progress won't be kick-started again until the peanut reduces his suckling. Number three is the joey who's spending some time suckling from outside the pouch and some out on his own in the big wide world. The female is a living assembly line of young at various stages of development. But when times are hard, the system has to be ruthless. She will cut off nutrition to the peanut in her pouch, and when it dies, she'll restart the embryo's development to take his place. Rusty's developing nicely. He's beginning to resemble something like a baby kangaroo. Now 
now three months old, he can hear all the sounds of the world he'll soon be inhabiting. It's all so unfamiliar. It's not surprising he'd prefer to stay in the pouch for just a while longer. There's plenty of... But Rusty's not the only one in the neighbourhood with a serious set of legs. An emu, the biggest native bird in Australia, announces his arrival. His skirt of feathers absorbs 80% of solar radiation, leaving the skin underneath cool. This dad needs a cool head. In the emu world, dads take on all parental responsibility. The chicks will be under his wing for 18 months. Not exactly the red kangaroo way. Males are pretty much deadbeat dads. They leave as soon as the young are conceived. Rusty also still relies on his mother for food and protection, so he tends to stay close. But apparently he's also got an independent streak. Maybe there's even more fun out there. Soon he leaves the rest of the mob and is in uncharted territory. Not a good place for a baby kangaroo to be. A wedge-tailed eagle. The largest bird of prey in Australia. And it likes to take young kangaroos. Mum realises she doesn't know where Rusty is. But the eagle does. Rusty's big ears and instincts tell him something's not right, but he's too young and inexperienced to know what it is. Rusty left his mother's side, then he's in trouble. With the bone-crushing power of her talons, the eagle could seize Rusty and drag him to his death. But suddenly, there's a flurry of panicked activity nearby. A rabbit is running for its life. Luckily for Rusty, there was easier prey to be had. This time. Red kangaroos and wedge-tailed eagles share the same territory. And when the eagle has a chick to feed, the hunting never stops. More than 10% of the eagle's diet is kangaroo. old and a full-fledged joey, a juvenile that spends all his time outside the pouch. In a few months, he won't have mum's milk to rely on anymore.
father will start tapering off his milk supply because there's another bun in the oven and it needs the nutrition. Mum's body now produces two totally different types of milk. A more dilute one for his tiny sister and a richer one for him. Each dispensed from its own nipple. But males like Rusty are about 10% larger at weaning than the average female and are heavy drinkers. This is the kangaroo version of tough love. Rusty's mother cuts him off completely. Her milk is needed elsewhere. Rusty is off to explore his wider world. Before long, he happens on another group of kangaroos. These are grey kangaroos, smaller than reds and more suited to areas where the climate is relatively predictable. They don't conserve water as well as reds and prefer the shade of the wooded areas on the desert's edge. Rusty is apparently a new experience for them as well. It's like a get together with distant relatives you've heard of but never met. Slightly awkward. And here comes another branch of the family, Wallaroos. Marsupials somewhere between red kangaroos and wallabies in size who frequent the rocky outcrops looking for shade and water. If you live in a desert, water is a treasure and its presence is never guaranteed. With no true seasons in this part of Australia, the only certainty is unpredictability. A waterhole is a gift from the heavens for many creatures. Emus, Reds and Wallaroos all gather to drink. But the relentless sun is turning the mud around the waterhole into clay, laying traps for the unwary. Rusty is not driven by the same intense thirst as his grey cousins. Reds have a kind of super kidney which concentrates their urine so they hold on to more water. While the greys have to drink more regularly. Their thirst sometimes drives them to unwise decisions. drawing some unwanted attention. A dingo. Dingoes will gladly take a young kangaroo under any circumstances. A joey stuck in the mud and unable to flee. That's just too good to resist. The other kangaroos can't help him. His fate is sealed. Even at the tender age of 18 months, Rusty has the good sense to get out of Dodge in a hurry. Now he's on the road again, in search of a good meal. He's still an adolescent and burning through energy at a faster rate than an adult. Kangaroo mobs can number in the hundreds, but this one is relatively small. And Rusty's appearance on the scene has caught another male's attention. They're around the same size and the same age, perfect sparring buddies. Game on. But 
this isn't a life or death battle. What they learn here will be crucial in later life, when the stakes are higher. Long arms for wrestling win fights, and females want winners. Rusty doesn't come out on top this time, but the boxing experience is invaluable. At this age, the learning curve for a kangaroo is steep and full of surprises. A sudden rustle in the dry grass spooks the gang he's hanging out with. But Rusty's the curious type. A shingle-backed lizard, heavily armoured, and with a thick tail that looks a lot like its head. Thus its other name, the two-headed skink. Rusty wants to know what he's supposed to do with this. Make friends? box with it? Eat it? The lizard doesn't seem suitable for any of these activities. And Rusty eventually gives up on the relationship. This part of the central Australian outback has been hot and dry for weeks. The plants have been picked clean. When food sources dry up like this, Red kangaroos are superbly adapted to survive. Still, even they can't live without water. But something is happening a hundred miles away. Where the sky has opened up and torrential rains are soaking the parched earth. These waters will end up in the Channel Country and be funneled inland hundreds of miles away from their origin. The channels are dry now, but because the region is low-lying, they won't be for long. And what was once an arid wasteland begins to revive. Swirling flocks of budgerigars to the dingo mum and her pups, all are drawn to the life-giving waters. The young eagle flexes its new feathers. And a young kangaroo celebrates in her own playful way. and adults can drink up to four gallons a day. Like all emus, the chicks revel in a cooling bath. There are some half a million emus roaming around the outback, browsing on fruits and seeds. What's good for the emus is also good for the rest of the ecosystem. As they move through the bush, they scatter the seeds of the flowers and fruit they've eaten along the way, which will sprout and become new plants. The weeks turn into months. Rusty. 
kangaroos are built to get where they want to go. Unfortunately, sometimes, especially when they're inexperienced, they get someplace they really don't want to be. The inland taipan is the most toxic snake on Earth. There's enough venom in one bite to kill a hundred full-grown men. And it specializes in killing mammals. The Australian desert is the kingdom of the reptiles, but kangaroos know too well to leave all snakes alone. Brown snakes kill more humans than any other snakes in Australia. But it's not the biggest reptile in the neighbourhood. This is. The Parenti, reaching eight feet long, venomous and fast on its feet. A large Parenti will eat a small kangaroo. But today, it's got its eye on an eastern brown snake. The forked tongue of the Parenti follows the brown snake's chemical scent trail and leads him to an abandoned burrow. A burrow with only one entrance. With the Parenti in the picture, a sanctuary can easily become a death trap. The body of one fearsome reptile disappears into the body of another. The months roll on, and Rusty has grown in both size and experience. He weighs 150 pounds now and has dozens of sparring matches under his belt. Today, he finds himself with a mob he's met before. The one with the tough male who intimidated him last time. But that was five years ago and Rusty's not running away this time. Each tries to attack his rival's head. Each instinctively keeps his own head back out of range. Although highly ritualized, fights between dominant males can mean a future as king or a loner, depending on the outcome. Testicles can be retracted. Don't want those damaged. Rusty, with the darker fur, is putting up a good fight, but the alpha male is more experienced. Females don't care who wins, just so long as he's got good genes. But Rusty is younger than his opponent, and in top fighting form. Finally, the king goes down. Now the mob is paying attention. Rusty's the top male now, and to the victor go the spoils. His first choice is this female, though he needs to give her urine the sniff test to make sure she's ovulating. She's ready. But Rusty has only a brief window of opportunity. She may only be receptive for a matter of hours. Better get to it. Mating doesn't take long, or wouldn't if there were only one female to consider. But Rusty's got miles to go before he sleeps. 
He's King Kangaroo now, and in addition to regular mating duties, he'll have to fend off other young roos who'd like to knock him off his throne, just as he did his predecessor. But that's not all Rusty has to worry about. The temperature is soaring and the land is drying out. Evaporation is sucking the life out of everything, flora and fauna alike. You can never tell when the weather will change, only that it will. And that's the origin of some of the red kangaroo's most amazing adaptations. They're masters of heat regulation. The fur on their backs reflects about 30% of incoming heat and keeps their skin cool. The blue parts of this thermal footage. Spreading saliva over their forearms cools the blood, which has been brought close to the skin surface via a dense cobweb of capillaries. simmering above 100 degrees for over a week. A third of the males have already become infertile. If these temperatures were to continue for three more months, the number would more than double. Reds defend their sperm by licking their scrotums to keep them cool. And in contrast to their battle strategy of retracting the scrotum, males let their testicles hang way down below their overheated trunks keeping them about seven degrees cooler than at their cores. The sand, even a few inches down, is cooler than at the surface. Red kangaroos dig until they reach cooler soil. And then... Ah! It hasn't rained now, the dry, dead grass offers Rusty no nourishment. But then... Unfortunately, these are dry electrical storms. No rain will come from them. But something else will. Something worse than hunger. Lightning has ignited the dry grass of the outback. The kangaroos can easily outrun a grass fire. Almost 10% of arid Australia can burn like this in a single year. In a matter of hours, the fire consumes what little forage there is. Rusty has to move on. really nowhere to go. Not this time. Parts of desert Australia are in the grip of a once in a century drought, while heat waves smash temperature records. Nothing that lives here has ever experienced anything like it. Rusty included. Some are suffering from severe malnutrition and dehydration. But if anyone can survive this, it's a red kangaroo. Human bodies are about 60% water. Rusty's is over 70%. Even in a heat wave like this, he can survive levels of dehydration that would kill most humans. Reds only sweat when they're on the move. At rest, they pant, which uses less water than sweating. Raising their breathing rate to over 200 breaths a minute reduces their deep body temperature and cools their brains. And of course, they cover their limbs in cooling saliva. But there's a price to pay. Licking uses up precious water if the drought continues much longer, this form of cooling will be too costly.
the kangaroos stay under whatever shade they can find. When times get this tough, females switch off their milk supply. Maternal instinct is strong, self-preservation is stronger. Unweaned offspring outside the pouch are the first to die, and the young in the pouches are next. As it dies, the female reactivates her waiting embryo. But if the drought persists, it too will die, and she will stop reproducing altogether. Even Rusty, one of the strongest, is in trouble. In these conditions, the males are the first to succumb, especially the largest, who, like Rusty, need more food. The demise of the red kangaroos is the wedge-tailed eagle's bounty. that are suffering. The drought is taking its toll everywhere. Predators turn on each other to protect a tiny piece of rancid meat. This is the last remaining waterhole. It's stagnant and salty. Ordinarily, the animals would never drink this water. Desperation drives them. The drought makes for uneasy bedfellows. This is a sign of things to come. Heat waves in Australia are becoming hotter and more frequent. continues and the casualties mount. Among them are many of Rusty's offspring. In some parts of these desolate lands, drought can kill eight out of every ten kangaroos. But Australia's desert inhabitants are a resilient bunch. After all, these may have been the hottest temperatures for the last hundred years. But these species have successfully weathered the climate for tens of thousands of years. And Rusty is still here, conserving his energy and biding his time. A change is going to come. It always has. After 12 months of merciless drought, the landscape is dotted with the remains of those that couldn't hang on any longer. But in the Australian outback, all bad things come to an end. Eventually. Thunderclouds are gathering in the distance. Rusty seems to sense a change in the weather. Somewhere there is rain, and where there is water, there will also soon be food. He just has to get there. As do the 
other red kangaroos that have made it this far. Rusty reaches the area watered by the storms, he finds a world restored by rain. Plenty to eat, plenty to drink. You can almost see the relief and joy in their hopping. stay here and take in the nourishment. In only a few weeks, males and females will have their health restored and soon they'll be ready to reproduce once again. But before that can happen, they have to make it through this a pack of hungry dingoes. Hunting in a pack more than doubles a dingo's success rate. Normally, they go for the weakest kangaroos in the group. But a pack of this size can take down something bigger. Something like Rusty. Luckily, his strength is completely restored, and he can travel at full tilt. Rusty doesn't accelerate by bounding faster, but by bounding further. He lengthens his leaps, at times covering 25 feet in a single bound. Once he gets past 10 miles an hour, Rusty rockets along with little extra effort, while the dingo's four legs need to move ever faster. Now hitting 25 miles an hour, Rusty's only using about half of the energy the dogs are putting in. They have no chance of catching him. Rusty can turn his attention to replacing the offspring lost to the drought. There's no question that he's the dominant male of this gang. The young he fathers will need an advantage to survive a world as harsh and unpredictable as this one. greater advantage could there be than to begin life as the progeny of the undisputed king of the red kangaroo mob.